Hi everyone, I'm Ewolf and today I'll be showing you an unboxing video about the new Nokia 808 PureView camera phone. It featured, one of the main features on this phone is the 41 megapixel camera and I'll be talking to you about everything there is to know and the specs about this new phone. This phone was first announced during the MWC, which is the Mobile World Congress held in Barcelona, Spain during February of 2012. It was first released in June 6th for Asia and European markets, starting with Russia, India, Singapore and the United Arab Emirates. I personally bought it from Singapore and got it shipped to Canada. It's now on sale on Amazon for the UK and the US and it's being sold around $6.99 US dollars. So take a look at the rest of this video for the unboxing. To start off this unboxing I'll be giving you a look at the box. As I mentioned earlier this is the Nokia 808 PureView. It's a pretty small box which includes everything you need inside. On the back here you have a preview of the specs inside. It features a 41 megapixel sensor, 4 inch AMOLED clear black display, a Xenon flash, and 1.3 gigahertz ARM11 processor, 16 gigabytes of internal memory which is also expendable via a micro SD card. There's an HDMI, Dolby Digital Plus technology, Carl Zeiss Optics, and pure view technology. So as you can see here this box is still sealed and I'm pretty eager to open it. So let's give it a shot. Here we go. Okay let's pull this and open this little baby up. Here are the contents. I'll just put the box aside. So this is the Nokia 808 PureView phone in the white version. It also comes in red and black. I'll carefully take it out of the plastic. This is the back of the phone, the cover. There's a Nokia logo here and a Nokia 808 logo here. This is the camera, the camera shutter. On top is the Xenon flash and the LED and the loudspeaker on the bottom. And this is the 4 inch display. I'll come back to it in just a minute. I'll just start with the contents. Included with it is the Nokia BV4D battery. It's 3.8 volts and develops 1400 milliamp hours. So I'm going to put this in soon. Under it, you have a little booklet here. I'm guessing this is the manual. Oh no, this is the limited warranty. This has all the information you need to know about your warranty coverage and how to reach Nokia personnel if ever you need to get this fixed or troubleshooting. Here are some barcodes to identify your product. Now under that, we got some information booklets. That's the NFC, including an NFC sticker. If you don't know what it is, I'll tell you all about it in a few minutes. This is a quick guide for the Nokia 808 PureView, and this is a product and safety information booklet. So here is the battery charger AC adapter. As you've probably noticed, it looks a little different than the AC adapter you're used to. That's because I ordered my phone online from Asia, and this is the European version of the charger. As you can see, it won't fit in my wall outlet here in North America. This works by plugging in the, the USB cable to micro USB and plugging it into your phone to charge it. I won't be using it, so I'll probably just charge my phone via the USB port on my computer. So I can put that back in here. Here you also have some earphones included. Nokia earphones with a little mic on it. 
to take calls and different sized earbuds to adjust to your ear. Finally, you got the USB for data transfer and charging. There's also a little wristband or lanyard included. It's made of leather. You can attach it to your phone. So that's all for the contents of the box. Now I'm going to open it to put in the battery. So to open it, you just need to pry this little plastic cover. Okay. Here are the slots for your micro SD and micro SIM cards. Let me go ahead and try to put my micro SD in. Here's my micro SD. I'm using a 16 gigabytes micro SD card, but you can also use a 32 gig one. Nokia also recommends that it's class 6 or higher if you're gonna save your 1080p videos directly onto it. In my case it's a class 10 so I don't have any problems here. This is my previous SIM card just to show you the difference between the micro SIM and the standard sized SIM card. So I will put that in. Let me just figure out how this works here. Okay. So you just push the thing down and lift it up. There's little arrows indicating this. It tells me to put my micro SIM on the left side. So that's what I'll do. Making sure that the little beveled edge is on the left as so. If I can just get this in, I think I will. So yeah, it's a little hard. Okay, my cameraman's informing me that I have to slide it in. So apparently, I think I gotta slide it in here in the metal part to insert it. Thanks to my cameraman for letting me know. He's a little more tech savvy than I am, so he gives me little tips. Okay, I got it in, so now let's do the same with my micro SD. Make sure this little side is on the left and that the little pins are aligned. By the way, if you feel like checking out his YouTube channel, his name is Nicholas English. He also has two other channels, which are Mode PC and Epic Game Bugs. I'll put the links in the description for you guys and now I should be good to go. So earlier I talked to you about the NFC chip. It's located on the back cover in between the battery and the cover. So NFC stands for near field communication. You can use this with another NFC enabled device or you can also use it with the NFC sticker which is called a NFC tag. You can program this tag for various functions for example, I, I could use it to set an alarm clock, start my Wi-Fi, open up my calendar, put my sticker in the car and make it start my music player and FM transmitter as soon as I get in. All you have to do is put your device at proximity to the sticker and it's going to send the information and do whatever you programmed it to do. Now it's time to put in the battery and power this little baby up just place this as so and make sure everything is locked securely and power the device using the little red button here it just gave me a little vibration telling me that it's it just launched in the meantime I'll tell you more about the screen here on the top right you have a light and proximity sensor Right next to it, you have the secondary camera. This is the speaker used for taking phone calls. You have three buttons here to take a call, drop a call, or turn on, turn off the device. And here in the middle to access the menu. Here on the side of the phone, you have the dedicated camera shutter key used to take pictures and also launches the camera app. This is to lock and unlock the device. Those are the volume buttons that can also be used to zoom in and zoom out when taking pictures. On top here, you have a 3.5 millimeter jack 
that can be used to listen to music via headphones or uh, stereo speakers. And this is not known by many, but this can also be used with the RCA cable. Let's just check it, boot it up. So as I was saying, uh, this can also be used with the 3.5 millimeter jack to RCA output, which are the red, yellow, and white. This is the micro USB slot used for data transfer and to charge your device. Right next to it, you got a second microphone. This is used for noise cancellation during phone calls and is also used simultaneously with the other mic when doing rich recording. And one of my favorite features here is the HDMI output port, which lets you plug in a micro HDMI to full sized HDMI to output anything you want on your high definition TV set. The screen is four inches long in diagonal and has a resolution of 360 pixels wide by 640 pixels high, which makes it a 184 pixel per inch density. It has an AMOLED capacitive touchscreen and a clear black display. The clear black display reduces light reflection, so you can view your screen even in direct sunlight. It also has Corning Gorilla Glass protection, which is also applied over the shutter. So to finish off this video, I'm just going to give you a little preview about the user interface. I want to show you something pretty cool, okay? Now it's locked, as you can see. To unlock it, I can use this, but the dedicated camera shutter button can also be used to take pictures while the device is on standby. See, here it launched the camera app right away and I'm just gonna snap a little picture at the highest resolution just to show you what this little bad boy can do. As I told you earlier, this is a 41 megapixel sensor. It can take 38 megapixel shots at the highest resolution in a four by three ratio or 34 megapixel images in a 16 by nine ratio. Let's try that out. I'm just gonna tap here to get in focus and the picture is saved. I'll just open it in the gallery. So to show you how far I can zoom into this 38 megapixel image, I'll just double tap. This gives you a halfway zoom. Double tap once more to zoom in all the way. As you can see, I can zoom in quite a bit. And if you notice around the edges, you see those diagonal lines. It looks pixelated, but it actually isn't. I checked on the box and it's actually the way that the box is printed that turns out like this. It's not the picture itself. So this phone does in fact take beautiful pictures. So you can catch a glimpse here to notice on your own. I'm not sure if you guys can see it here at home but yeah. So I wanted to show you the user interface. Let me get out of here. This comes with Symbian Bell Feature Pack 1. On Symbian Anna, I used to have three home screens. Here, uh, whoops, I'm just into editing mode here. Don't want to do that. So here, if you notice, I have the clock here. So I have one home screen, two, three, four, and it comes back to the first one. I've been told I can go up to six home screens. I can fully customize the pictures I want as backgrounds on my home screens could ch change the widgets and I can reduce the number of home screens if I wish to. And what's pretty cool compared to Android, when you go all the way at the end of your home screen, it scrolls back to the first one. You don't need to scroll backwards to get back to your first home screen. The last thing I wanted to show you is compare its dimensions. So this is 123.9 millimeters long by 60.2 millimeters wide and 13.9 millimeters thick because of the little hump here that houses the 41 megapixel sensor it's actually five lenses stacked one on top of each other and for another comparison i'll just put an iphone next to it this is the iphone 4s with the nice little r2d2 case they are almost the same size the iPhone is a little smaller in length, but almost as wide. 
but you can see that the beveled edge makes my Nokia 808 Pure View a little thicker. And to compare it with, with its predecessor, the Nokia N8, this one has a 12 megapixel camera. And as you can see, it's just been Saint Jean Baptiste here in Quebec, Canada. This is uh, the equivalent of July 4th for you Americans. So I pimped out my phone with a pretty little case. So this is the nice aluminum design of the Nokia N8. And next to it, it's quite smaller. But since I had big hands, I found it a little harder to handle. Plus, I thought that the menu button was located pretty awkwardly here on the bottom left. It's kind of hard to reach and tricky at times. As you can see, it also has a xenon flash, but it's lacking the LED. It has the dedicated shutter key. They both look almost the same on the edge and on top with the 3.5 millimeter jack, the HDMI and the power button. But the Nokia 808 has nothing here on the left side while this one houses the SIM card and the SD card and also the micro USB input. This one also had a, a input for AC adapter which the 808 doesn't have. Anyways, I, I won't go into too much details since I will be making two more videos about this phone. The first video will be about the Nokia 808 PureView full review, talking mainly about the user interface, the camera app, and the web browser. I will also tell you about the home screens and how to fully customize them and show you how to program an NFC tag. And in the second video, I will make a full comparison between the 808 and my original Nokia N8. So thank you very much for watching guys. Give me thumbs up, please share and subscribe to my channel.